I'm Chris Sanchez and welcome to Sonoma Views, where we talk real estate, property management, and local restaurant reviews. In this video, I'm actually doing a truck video. Uh, beautiful day, by the way. I'm doing a, a video here in the truck and I'm talking about what happens when a tenant moves out after they give the landlord a 30-day notice, but the tenant moves out early. What happens to their rent money? Thank you so much for being here, so let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna paint a scenario. I'm gonna use April as the example because April has 30 days. April 1st, the, considering it's a month-to-month -month rental agreement, the tenant pays for the April rent in advance, the full April rent, and on that first, on the same day, the tenant gives the landlord a notice, a 30-day notice that they're moving out. Now that notice is very important. That is a legal notice that the tenant is giving to the landlord of the termination of tenancy. The tenant is ending the relationship and they're giving the landlord a legal notice of that fact. That notice is 30 days minimum. And that means if uh, they give the landlord the notice on April 1st, then that puts them all the way to April 30th, the 30 day, uh, 30 day term. Just to repeat, when a tenant gives the landlord a 30 day notice, they're letting the landlord know that the term that the rental tenancy is going to end 30 days in the future okay so april 1st the tenant pays the full month's rent if the tenant moves out say april 10th 10 days out they speed up they're able to move into their new place they have the place clean they're ready to go and it's the 10th of the month and they're ready to hand in keys and if they give the keys back uh, to the tenant what happens to those 20 days of quote unused rent because the tenant moved out on the 10th day april 10th they paid for the full month of april but they moved out on the 10th what happens to those extra 20 days so that was a question um the initial the right answer as a matter of fact is that the rent is due and payable to the landlord up to and including the 30th day of that notice so if the tenant gave the landlord a 30-day notice on april 1st that tenant is responsible for the rent payment for the entire month of April, that prepaid, they already paid it anyway, all the way up until the 30th, including the 30th day, or, or if the tenant happens to stay over, say to May 1st, then they still owe that day of rent as well. But they owe the rent up until the day that they completely surrender possession of the property, which is handing over the keys, uh, or that full 30 day period, okay? So a landlord could just keep that money because that's part of the deal. Um, when a tenant gives a landlord a notice, they're giving them a one month, 30 days, this is going to be my last month rent. And then that gives the landlord 30 days to prepare for an upcoming vacancy, get that property ready, possibly start marketing early, um, et cetera, okay? So there's a lot of work that, that's involved when we know that there's a, a vacancy coming up. So that was the first part of the answer. The rent is due and payable to the landlord, the landlord could just keep it. The second thing that could happen, and this is kind of more of an exception, and it's worth checking into, whether um, you're a landlord or a tenant watching uh, this video. If you make a mutual agreement, say you have a good relationship with the tenant, the tenant has been great, uh, pay the rent on time, and then the landlord actually has an incentive to get that unit vacant, to get that unit back sooner than later, the landlord might agree to credit back, basically refund that unused portion of that rent. They don't have to, but they can. So let's say um, right now as an example, I, I had a very similar situation right now. The land, uh, we had tenants under a lease and their lease actually didn't end until end of July. But the owner, the property owner said, if they want to move out early, they can move out early because we want to get in there and renovate the place. We want to remodel it and put it back on the market and either secure new tenants or put it up for sale. So if the landlord has an incentive and they want the property back sooner um, and they don't, they don't want to wait the 30 days, then they might make a deal. Give me that property back on the 10th. If it's clean, we'll do the walkthrough. As long as everything is good, I'll only charge you those 10 days rent and then you know waive the refund or it's either a credit or a refund those uh, remaining 20 days. But that would be an agreement between the landlord and the tenant if they can make that arrangement. So that would be an exception. I'm almost at five minutes now. I'm Chris Sanchez. This is Sonoma Views. Thank you very much for watching. If this is your first time here, 
There's plenty of videos on this channel. It's sonomaviews.com on YouTube, Sonoma Views. And you can click subscribe and there's a little bell icon. If you click that, you will get notifications every time I post a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.